In this video, we're going to take a look at some general ideas around 7-inch quads. We'll take a look at the new FPV Cycle 7-inch motors, but starting out with why you might even consider a 7-inch quad. Well, aside from the sheer enjoyment of having something that is a little bit bigger than five inch and the unique flying experience that it gives you, the main advantage that I see to seven inch is the fact that larger props in general have this ability to give you more consistent speed throughout the entire span of your battery pack. And that doesn't necessarily mean that it's gonna be more efficient. It just means that you can literally just move faster more consistently than you can on a five inch five inch quads you kind of have to like spurt the speed here and there whereas a seven inch quad you can kind of hold it at mid throttle and you're cruising really really quickly they're also very popular uh, for um, mountain cruising because they they do have the ability to surf faster than a five inch quad but they're not necessarily more efficient and i primarily focus on flight performance not necessarily flight time. You can build a seven inch to fly for an hour. That's fine. You can also build a four inch quad to fly for 40 minutes. So flight time doesn't necessarily stick to one particular prop size. It all depends on how you build the quad. To me, having a quad that flies better means that I can do more with the quad and it's more enjoyable to fly and everything works out better. I crash less, I can execute what I want to execute easier with less skill. Looking at seven inch in general, the most common things that I hear about seven inch is that they shrug off weight like it's nothing. While this is somewhat true, it's actually not entirely true and adding weight to a seven inch quad does affect this flight performance quite a bit. Now with a seven inch prop, you do get a lot more surface area like as in prop disc area than on a five inch quad. So it's not gonna affect it as much, but it still affects it quite a bit. This quad without the GoPro on board flies like a different quad entirely. It flies so much better. But if you're flying something like this, you're probably gonna want a GoPro on board. And that's primarily why the overall frame design has this kind of big dead cat style, because it's, been, it's become very common to build this sort of a setup with the battery on top and kind of like a bus setup with the camera up front and having the camera in line with the battery provides a little bit better uh, weight, uh, not weight distribution, but just the concentration of weight in the middle of the frame so that you get better control over all of the quad. Maybe not so much flip control, but roll control, which is primarily what we use, is a lot better when you have all this weight in line and more in a condensed package. Taking a look at the frame itself, this frame will come out in time. I'm still working on it. It's, I've been working on it for a while. This frame is 150 grams or around 150 grams. It's got two mounting platforms right next to each other and the camera kind of sits below here because having the camera on top of the GoPro just didn't make total sense to me. And having it below just lets you fly lower without having your props slap the ground as you're flying so it just makes more sense to me to have the camera underneath it's also easier to design the gopro mount because this mounting platform is the same as it is on the glide and every other frame on fpv cycle the glide actually got a little bit of an update it got beefed up quite a bit it's about 103 104 grams now and this is what's shipping right now the glide hammers are still the old style i'll talk about this a little bit later in other videos and that's kind of all i really wanted to say about seven inch up front right now i will talk about it maybe more in, in the future but let's take a look at the fpv cycle motors so this is a i didn't bring a, a spare like a a loose motor with me to compare but this is a motor size that I don't really want to share if you go, go to the product description you can see what you can kind of deduce what the motor size is but if you compare it to the very popular 2806 motor from uh, 
Brother Hobby, you can see kind of how the sizes compare and generally guess as to what size it is. Now, I am not really going to disclose the actual size of the stator explicitly because manufacturers just copy everything and the only reason why we have motors and props of a certain size is because these manufacturers just picked up on what somebody else in the community is doing or another manufacturer is doing and just made a me too motor to piggyback off the the marketing and be able to profit off of it they're really just trying to suck money out of the market which is fine because they're just businesses but that's kind of what i'm trying to avoid so this motor was designed specifically for improved control performance and not for super heavy load quads. This quad that I'm holding here is about 1.2 kilograms and that's with a 2200 milliamp uh, 6S battery, but it's not optimal. I still have an XT60 on here, which I wouldn't recommend. I'd recommend an XT90 because the power transmission or the power conductivity of XT60 is just not enough for this size of a quad. With an XT90, you're gonna get more performance and longer flight times both of them together. Also, this Infinity battery actually doesn't perform very well. There's a, a couple of batteries we have coming, and I'm also planning on moving to two 3S batteries instead of one 6S battery, just because this is not a cheap battery. If you drop a cell, you kind of you are out the entire battery. So going with two 3S batteries and two XT60 connectors, it's going to make it easier to charge. And if you do lose a cell, you just lose one of the 3S packs, you don't lose the whole battery. The overall weight addition is actually not that much. It's just a couple grams because it's a little bit extra wire. But overall, it just makes more sense to me. So look for that coming. But back to the motor. This motor is different as you might have been able to guess. It is made by Brother Hobby because <laughs> they are very similar designs, but they're not the same designs. The winding in this motor does have an upgrade uh, on the enamel of the windings. They are, they are higher temperature windings and it does have a 13 millimeter bearing instead of a 12 millimeter bearing in there. There are a couple other changes in there as well, but generally the size of this motor was was determined by looking at my charts and kind of <laughs> deciphering what I've found from testing so many motors. And in general, I find recently after testing so much that 2806 motors are just a little bit small for managing seven inch props, but this motor is actually not a whole lot better. It's about 20% bigger, 21% bigger by volume. And the goal with this motor was to fit more power into a low weight and it actually weighs five or six or six grams more than the 2806 motor. It weighs the same as the new Emax Eco Series 2807 motor, which is about 55 grams. However, it produces a lot more control performance. I'm not even gonna say power or thrust because I don't even consider those numbers. Those don't even matter to me, but control performance matters a lot more. And compared to any 28 size motor, even 2808, I found that the that the larger 30, it's actually, it's called the 30 millimeter motor, but it's, it's actually larger than 30 millimeters. But this larger size does give me a little bit better grip on the prop, a little bit better control of the prop. And overall, this motor is not intended for super heavy lifter seven inch quads. There are bigger motors for that and I would advise to go with bigger props for that. Other things about this motor is that the reliability of the motor is kind of in line with what a 2207 might be. If you look at the chart, it's kind of in the same position as you track up the chart as a 2207. So we did try to move towards something that is very reliable so that you don't have any issues when you're flying long range or flying risky things. And uh, as a result, the motor while it has much better surface area to volume ratios than something like a 2808 or 3115 or something, also much lower weight, it uh, still has some minor heat buildup, but that's acceptable. And that's just as a, that's a side effect of producing the motor in a size that is generally more reliable. And we just can't do everything about that. Heat is not a good thing for motors because it tends to reduce their efficiency quite a bit and also their power overall. And it changes your tune once the motor heats up a little bit.